Beware of hirelings. Beware of charlatans. It's a charlatan. Charlatan is someone who's going around boasting themselves to be something they ain't and is pretty much a con artist. And a lot of con artists out there seek one thing. Mammon. Money. Money, money, money. Money. Yeah. I got to be honest with you. If I see another advertisement or another video pop up on the homepage or recommendations for that vile scum TD Jakes, I think I'm going to vomit. With everything, with the hardship that people are going through right now, one of the things that just irritates me to no end is seeing these hirelings still pressing people to give, give, give. You know, if you got to press people that hard, you, you ought to really consider, you know, <laughs> Whether the person that who is asking, who's, you know, these begathons, you really need to consider to whom you might be helping. Because like I said, in these times, right now, one of the things that is most abhorrent unto me personally is seeing these, you know, and mostly it's these Pentecatholic, care Catholic people still doing the, you know, the name it and claim it nonsense. You know, still harping on to this thing about give me money so that you can get a blessing. Or these people who have done stuff before and then they're sitting back on their lees and just giving little morsels when right now the church of the living God needs all hands on deck. But no, you're going to be a hireling. Hmm. What, what, what's the phrase? Pay to play? I hope the Lord gives you a, a boil upon your buttocks. Every one of you. Every one of you. Yeah, beware of hirelings, brethren. Because see, right now, things are very tight for a lot of people. And for us in the Church of the Living God, we have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I know our dear brother uh, from North Dakota is a perfect example of this. Um, the Lord has miraculously provided for him, and that abundantly in his dire need, with all the stuff that is on his uh, table right now. And there again, not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Then you got these these personalities, these Christian personalities with their begathons. Yeah. Yeah. Today and uh, today, right now, at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, taking scriptures out of context to guilt people, to give them into give uh, for them to give onto their ministries. Y'all make me sick. Y'all make me sick. I seriously do hope and pray that the Lord reward you with a boil upon your buttocks. You know, during the time of the kings, get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to 2 Kings chapter 5. When we get into the scriptures, follow me along, word for word, Verse by verse, okay? I, I, you're going to notice in me a little fire. Because this is something that makes me very angry and sickens me to death. I've known these Christians. And it always seems to be with those that have longevity underneath their belt. Where they, they reach a point where they get this entitlement mentality. Entitlement. Okay, my father is a perfect example of this. Okay, he's Christian <laughs> for, for many years. Yeah, and he's a millionaire. And he's the first one to tell you about it. Yeah, yeah, he loves money. He loves money. He's also a pastor. 
in a church building. Church buildings who preach tithing. It, it's, you know, on that, you know, ruck man, okay? I had a sermon of ruck man before. Um, a sermon on giving where he talked about tithing. And of all people who should have known that tithing is not a requirement for us today in this dispensation, it was, you know, the great yeah, <laughs> Pete Ruckman. Okay? But then again, that's the mentality of the church building. Okay? Preach to them tithing so they can pay them bills. But what if someone's not associated with that, with that church building, but yet is poisoned by that theology? While not associated with the building. You know, these TV ministries? Yeah? Yeah? During the time of Elisha, Elisha, not Elijah, it was a very turbulent time for Israel. Very turbulent time. And there was a man named Naaman, a Syrian, who was a mighty man of valor, an honorable man. And he was a Syrian, but he was a leper. And the king of uh, Syria um, heard through a little maid or whatnot that uh, there was a prophet in Israel that could heal Naaman of his leprosy. So the king sent uh, Naaman unto the king of Israel, or whatever, uh, with a letter. It's like, hey, I heard that you can heal uh, Naaman of his leprosy. And the king of Israel heard uh, about this, and he's like, whoa! And he rent his clothes. It's like, whoa, what is this guy trying to do? And see, he's trying to start a war with me. I, knowing the king of Israel is like, I can't heal this guy. What, what you talking about? See, he's trying to start a war with me. Trying to uh, have me to do something that I, only God can do. But then, Elisha sends his man unto the king of Israel. It's like, dude, why have you rent your clothes? Send them on to me. So he does. Naaman goes on <clears throat> to Elisha. And Elisha would not even go out to see Naaman. But told them, or through a mediator or whatnot, or through someone else, you know, go dunk, uh, dunk yourself sometimes in Jordan and be clean of your leprosy. Then the man runs away, you know, goes off all furious because he was expecting the, you know, the showmanship, you know, which we can talk a lot about in a different video. But he was expecting him to come out like, call upon the name of the Lord, call down the fires and make this grand shoe. You know, kind of like what the charismatic Pentecatholics do, you know. <laughs> They're all about showmanship. But no, Elisha told Naaman, just go dip yourself in Jordan. Seven times. You'll be clean. Naaman's like, can I dip myself in one of the rivers of my own country? Aren't there the waters of my own country better than all of Jordan? But then a little maid says to Naaman, it's like, uh, you know, my Lord, if he would have told you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? But he tells you to go simply, dunk yourself seven times in Jordan. You'll be clean. Then the man's like, all right, fine. So he goes and, goes and does it. And he's clean. And he's ecstatic. And then he goes back to uh, Elisha. And it's like, you know, hey, wow, praise the Lord. Here, let me give you stuff. Elisha wouldn't take it. It's like, no, no. Some will argue about that with Naaman, about him giving gifts uh, for what was done unto him, unto Elisha. Some will make the argument, it's like, well, Elisha being a Jew, wouldn't want to take gifts from someone who wasn't a Jew of Syria. Uh, <laughs> that's a shaky argument, and we will see why that is a shaky argument. But, nah, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. And of course, Elisha wouldn't take it. And he's like, go, 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 do your thing. And the man went away. Gehazi. Gehazi. Second Kings chapter 5. That was the backstory. Second Kings chapter 5. Let us begin at verse 20 and read on to verse 27. 
in 2 Kings chapter 5. That was the back story up to uh, verse 20. Go ahead and read the whole chapter on your, whole, on your own time. Okay? But 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 20 on verse 27. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master, Elisha, has spared Naaman, this Syrian. Now hold on right there. This Syrian. Gehazi had disdain for Naaman. Why? Because he was a Syrian. Okay? Obviously. It was Gehazi who had the mentality, well, you know, you shouldn't take anything from this guy, but we're going to see what happens. But, uh, yeah, Gehazi, because Naaman was a Syrian, had a little bent against him. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman, this Syrian, in not receiving at his hands that which he brought. But, as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. Now, there's a whole lot we can say about this verse. Here's Gehazi trying to get the rewards of something that he had nothing to do with. Yes. Yes. But also, too, of Gehazi, was he going to take from the man to share with others? Well, let's see. So Gehazi followed after Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him, and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. Lies. My master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them. I pray thee, a talent of silver, and two changes of garment. And the man said, Behold, take two talents. And he urged him, and bound two talents of silver in two bags, with two changes of garments, and laid them upon two of his servants, and they bare them before him. So now, Giazi lies to the man and takes from him, you know, and Naaman, who originally was told by Elisha, is like, no, I don't want anything. Go, go. So now he's like, oh. See what a little covetousness can do? Hmm? And Elisha, a prophet of the Lord, who stood before the Lord as his mouthpiece, as his ambassador, so to speak, How was the Lord not, how was the Lord shamed by this act of Gehazi of covetousness? Hmm? Think about that. Roll that around in your head a little bit. Okay? Now let's continue. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house, and let the men go, and they departed. So he just put them in the house, okay? Obviously, Gehazi had no intent of sharing this with others. Even though Elisha at the first, like, no, we don't want it. You, you go do your thing. Okay? But he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. Verse 25 is very similar, similar to the account that we read in Genesis chapter 3. When our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, says unto Adam, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee that thou shalt not eat of? Did God know what happened? Yes. God was giving Adam the chance to come clean. Fess up. He done blew it, but he was giving him the chance to come clean, fess up. Very similar. Very similar. We're going to prove it to each other here, okay? <laughs> okay? So, but he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. Second lie. 
Ugiazi. Now, like I told you, some would like to make the argument that the reason why Elisha wouldn't take anything from Naaman was simply because he was a Syrian. That's not true. Verse 26. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? So Elisha knew exactly what Gehazi had done, because the Lord had obviously revealed it to him. Obviously. Think about what's going on right now, how people are hurting. And you have these thieves, these scumbags, these hirelings. Stealing money from the sheep. Is it time to receive money? And to receive garments? And olive yards and vineyards? And sheep and oxen? And men servants and maid servants? You gotta remember, at this time, it was a very turbulent time for Israel. You gotta remember that. And God was glorified in the healing of Naaman, a Syrian. And then through Gyasi's covetousness, getting himself involved, sticking his nose where it didn't belong. And through covetousness, put a blotch on the Lord, onto Naaman. Think about it. Elijah's like, don't, I don't want it. Just go, <laughs> go. I was like, okay. And then here comes Gehazi. I said, oh, oh, now you want some? Sure. And, and, and of course, Naman was more than. It's like, oh, sure, sure. Yeah. You know? But still, see, that in, in itself could prom could have promoted in Naman. It's like, well, you know, the guy sent me along, but hey, now something happened. So, hey, okay. But, you know, at the first, it was like, eh. You know what I'm saying? Then you have Gehazi coming along, interjecting himself in something that he was not involved in and trying to bank off of it. And Elisha says, is it time to receive money and to receive, receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants? The leprosy. Therefore, if Naman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence, a leper as white as snow. The people who are hurting right now, is it a time to receive money and garments and olive yards and vineyards and stuff like that? You have these hirelings, these charlatans, still, give me, give me, give me. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give gimme give so God can bless you. <laughs> Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Like I said, for some unknown reason, <laughs> unknown. I keep seeing these things from that devil T.D. Jakes coming up and stuff like that. It's like, why am I seeing this filth? <laughs> and the one that I commented on, uh, they removed my comment right away and blocked me. <laughs> but anyway, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. See, right now, the church of the living God needs all hands on deck. Okay. Time is getting short. Time is getting short. We need those of the Church of the Living God right now to do whatever it is the Lord has called them to do. Okay? Whatever it is the Lord has called them to do. In whatever capacity it is in. Okay? And it matters very little if you've done this for a long time or not. Right now is not the time for you to be sitting back and suckling 
at this time when everyone of the church of the living God needs one another. This, this plays against that, well, I've been there, done that. And that it's good to have an experience. But see, I have encountered people who will use that as an excuse. Will use that as an excuse. Luke chapter 12, verses 15 on to verse 22. 21, excuse me. And he said unto them, Take heed. And beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Having food and raiment therewith, let us be content. Anything else is a luxury. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. Rich man you got to remember, riches doesn't always correlate just onto filthy lucre. Okay? Actually, brethren, I would submit unto you, get that from your head. Okay? Okay? Because you got to remember, a lot of these devils are, you know, promoting themselves and the, the give me, give me, give me, okay? These begathons that these heretics do. They're, they're wearing the fanciest clothes, buying jewelry, driving cars and big houses, still to this day. Like John MacArthur. I, I you know what, I, I, uh, I, I really hope the Lord silence, silences that devil. I really do. I, I have no love lost for John MacArthur or the like, okay? But remember, Riches is not just filthy lucre. Riches encompasses possessions above and beyond, okay? The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And see, rich man, ground, brought forth plentiful, okay? And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Look at all the increase I have. A rich man who had many things. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. Okay? He was doing right. Sowing seeds. And then it brought forth plentiful. He's like overwhelmed. He's like, wow, I have so much. Now what am I going to do? And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Verse 19, and I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Take thine ease. Yeah. Eat. Drink and be merry. Yeah. Get your feet up on the desk there, boy. You've done, you've done your part. You've done your part. And yeah, our time is ending. But how are we going to finish, brethren? You've done your part, right? Now it's just time for you to sit back and just live off of the excess, right? Charlatan. But God said unto him, Thou fool. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Hey, if the shoe fits, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then, who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Just like Kiazi. There's a lot of Kiazis out there right now, if you not noticed. Taking, trying to take credit. Trying to 
make themselves of the church of the living God, but are not. I want to reap all the benefits. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Here's a, here's a warning to those hirelings and those who are on easy street right now and milking, taking advantage of the poor saints. It's one thing, it is one thing to have your needs met. It's another thing to be an extravagance and to get above your means and get to a point where you are so comfortable but then when things start dipping low because of the times then what do you got to do? What do these guys do? Okay, well, like, like I heard the Ruckman thing. Giving was the name of the sermon. Okay, he talked about it several times. And even that Sam Sick guy, you know, had made comments before. It's like, well, we, we need certain things in church, so I better go talk up tithing to get money up. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 15 on to verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 15 on to verse 18. <laughs> but Jeshurun, Jeshurun means highly favored. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the capital R, a rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the capital R, rock, that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten that, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And while we're here, Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Backtracking a little. Verses 11 on to verse 20. <laughs> this is something that these hirelings really like to take out of context too. Okay? Got to remember, this is a different dispensation too. Okay? But we're looking at this part of it for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? you got to remember, these people here on these cell evangelists, these hell evangelists, they're not saved. They're not of the church of the living God. Okay? They're putting on a shoe. They're putting on a facade. Okay? And milking people for all that they're worth during turbulent times such as this. Then you have others out there. Give off a really good shoe that they are. Also, milking and demanding money, money, money. Pay to play, right? Yeah. I, I hope the Lord rewards y'all with a boil on your buttocks. I really do. I really do. Mwah. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 20. And this is something that we all Church of the living God, need to keep in our minds. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments, different dispensation, okay? But to think that we have no commandments to keep today in this dispensation, you're a fool. Or you're foolish. Now granted, we're not keeping commandments to stay saved in this dispensation. No, we are not. Okay, different dispensation, dispensational difference. But like I've told you before, God doesn't save you and just let you run amok, uh, run amok as you would dictated by your own mind and your own heart. No. Okay? Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, 
And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. Uh, you know, brethren, when the Lord is, I mean, look at King Solomon, people. Look at King Solomon. The blessings that came upon him. Okay? And what, what happened with all those blessings? That's why we are to pay more attention to the blessor rather than the blessing, even though the blessings are great. But what do you cherish more? The blessing or the one who's doing the blessing? And if your focus is more on the worldly things, which our Lord knows you have need of, I think you've lost your focus. I question the motivation of some. I really do. I really do. Then thine heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. Instruction and righteousness out of that world for us today from the house of bondage. You know what my fear is? I don't ever want to forget. I have seen many examples of how not to become the longer that I have the privilege and grace to walk with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. I have seen many examples of how not to become. And that is one of my, that's my biggest fears, brethren. I, I and even to you, my enemies, I, uh, I, I, I admit, I, 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 I fear being someone who adapts this been there, done that mentality, even though it's okay to have our experience but you know what? When you get to a point where you're sitting back, I've been there, I've done that, you can become complacent. Okay? That could give you that can give you over onto your own pride, thinking, I've been there, I've done that, now I'm entitled to do this. Where I believe, you know, like when reading the scriptures every day, try to, it's like, Lord. Give me eyes to see, ears to hear, and an understanding heart. Help me to look at this, your word, afresh, as if it were the first time. Because, God forbid, we become all too familiar with what our Lord does with us. I take for granted. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who led thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power, and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. And of course the charismatic hell evangelist guys will use this verse. But see the God they're referring to is the little G God of this world. Who is answering their prayers and giving them things all for their worldly benefit, for their fleshly benefit. Okay? See the previous video before this one, uh, who is answering the prayers, okay? If I remember, I'll link it in the description box, okay? They're taking this out of context. Again, dispensational difference. But you know, brethren, like I said, we have to keep our rightful place as dust underneath the Lord's feet. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he sware unto thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be, 
If thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish, or be handed over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient on the voice of the Lord your God. Now granted, again, in this dispensation, okay, we don't have to keep commandments to be saved, stay saved, or whatever. Once we come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and fear the Lord, call upon his name, and he save us, we are sealed until the day of redemption. You don't have to keep anything to be saved. But remember, God lives within you. You are his ambassador. You are his representative. And God hates covetousness. God hates covetousness. Just as much as I believe he hates pride. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 20. Here's where we're going to be spending the majority of our time. I'm going to do light expository here. Light, but I want to just go over this. This is, like I said, I'm seeing a lot right now, a lot of these hirelings who are itching people's ears, telling them smooth things, and also giving them things that just give them rah, yeah, 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 rah, rah moments. Yeah, yeah. And most of the Church of the Living God seems to be consumed with finger pointing and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Acts chapter 20. We will be reading verses 28 on to verse 38 with some light expository here going on. Okay? We begin at verse 28 on to verse 38 to close of the chapter. Follow me along. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost, not man, not a Jesuit college. Not because you have a feeling. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the Christians. Hey, you know I was going to do that, didn't you, brother? <laughs> to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 12, on to verse 16. Let no man despise thy youth. Now, you and I, we've talked about this before. Why did Paul say to Timothy, let no man despise thy youth? He wasn't a teenager. He was probably in his mid to uh, anywhere but uh, early to late 20s, okay? He was a youth, okay? He wasn't a teenager, okay? Why did Paul say this to him? Because he was brought up in the scriptures by his mother and grandmother, okay? He was brought up from a little regret in the scriptures. Train up a child in the way he shall go, and when he is old, he shall not depart from it, okay? He was brought up right, okay? That's why Paul said that, okay? We've talked about this before. Let no man despise thy youth, but... Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, self-sacrifice, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading. What are you reading? Are you reading the scriptures every day? Hmm? Why not? Till I, go, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to Doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on the hand with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all, and profiting, growing in the faith, not profiting in worldly means. That you get to live high on the hog. Okay? You're profiting, meaning you're growing in the faith. You are growing in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Okay? 
that you're pressing on forward, being a better example than you were yesterday, okay? Yes, meditate upon these upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt save, both save thyself and them that hear thee. Okay? You're already saved, sealed unto the day of redemption. What does save thyself mean then? Remember, if we deny him, he will deny us. That's not talking about salvifically because we are already sealed unto the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. If we deny him, he will deny us a blessing, a reward, a protection, or something like that. So if you're not taking heed to yourself, save thyself, embarrassment, making a mockery of the Lord, okay? Not walking right according to the scripture, being a bad example, Okay? Okay? Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Isn't it interesting that the two chapters in the books of Corinthians, both... Uh, 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, both chapter 9s deal with providing and the necessity of the saints. Isn't that interesting? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 on to the close of the chapter. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. We're not in competition with each other, remember. Okay? Okay, some will say, like, I'm trying my best to do better than you. No, no, we're not in competition with each other. Okay, do, you, you do know that, don't you? I hope you do. I hope you do. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've seen in supposed Christians, the <laughs> Christians, they are Christians. Let me, forgive me for saying that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> these Christian people trying to one-up one another. Uh, mine's better than yours. <laughs> yeah, you, you think so, don't you, pal? <laughs> yeah. But we're not in competition with one another. Okay? And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as, a, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body, mortify, mortification, okay? But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway, hypocrite. You preach one thing, but then you do another thing. You say one thing, and yet you live another. And because you don't do that, because you don't keep your body under, you be cast away, not salvifically, but, you know, dethroned whoo, from your throne that you have established. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 8. One second, brethren. Sorry about that. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 8. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, who judgeth all things, comparing spiritual things to God, you know, the Lord, the God, our Father who is in you, with spiritual things, the scriptures, okay? Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Tempted to go along with the sin, or also tempted to be puffed up with yourself. Which, 
fortunately, being in a position such as this can very easily happen. I've seen it. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You, you, we do got to remember, brethren, that we're not doing these things for our own benefit, but for the benefit of others, the church of the living God. Okay? And these, these the hell evangelist people, the T.D. Jakes, the Copelands, and the Michael Browns, and all these, these nitwits, okay, they don't care about anybody. They only care about them own, their own selves and their own pocketbook. For if a man think himself to be something, oh, I've been there, I've done that, I've done my time, I've, I've done this, I, I feel like Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. Shut up. Go dunk your head in cold toilet bowl water. Cool off, hot shot. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. See, I think verse 1 more gives is talking about a warning about pride. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own, work, uh, his own burden. Prove his own work. Examine your own selves. Prove your own selves. Whether, you're, whether or not ye be in the faith. Okay? The work that you are doing. Is it to strengthen and edify and encourage the body of Christ, the church of the living God, or to promote your own agenda so that you can retire and live comfortably? That's a byproduct if it comes by putting the church of the living God first. What do you think these hirelings are doing, huh? They're just putting stuff out so they can retire, live life on the high on the hog. They don't care. When push comes to shove. When push comes to shove. Look at them. Look at them. How many are against the steal of the Jesuit poniard? How many of them are against? You know, put it on the muzzle. That Charles Lawson guy, okay? He's up on, a, on that pedestal thing of his. You look in the congregation, they're wearing the muzzles. You see, and you know these some of these videos where the guys are speaking, not wearing muzzles, but in the crowds, they're wearing muzzles. Hirelings! Hirelings! For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Which all these cell evangelists, these hell evangelist people, these hirelings, these charlatans who are only doing things for money, doing things that they profess they hate in order to promote themselves. So people will give them more money. Yeah. Yeah. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, you know, the skin suit. Yeah, I hope those cigarettes make you cough, pal. Yeah, uh, the skin suit, you know. Uh, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Money and wealthy things are like dust that can be blown away. Just like that. Oh, no, but, you, you know, you got your own little castle, right? When everything collapses around us, you're going to be safe on your little castle? Yeah, tell that to the Jesuit hitmen who will come after everybody during that time because you have your own established castle. Yeah. For he that soweth to his flesh shall love the flesh, reap corruption. But he that soweth to the capital S spirit shall of the capital S spirit reap life everlasting. Hmm. And, and, and most importantly, looking back in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves, watch yourself, examine yourself daily, and 
send to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, you know, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost said, uh, uh, call me out Paul and Barnabas unto the work whereunto I have called them. Okay. The Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you know, the Lord is that spirit, called Paul and Barnabas. The Holy Ghost saith, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. Okay. The Lord was the one that called them. And to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. To, what's the purpose? Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Okay? First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. Verses 1 and 2. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind and verse 3. Neither as being lords, Nicolaitans, Diotrephes, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. What are some of the examples some of these people are setting? I, I remember uh, dearly, dearly beloved, um, sent a screenshot of this Hamite woman that she witnessed to and this Hamite woman was uh, I am educated what is, what is it? I am highly educated and something else like that run, run along with this stuff and don't preach that stuff here <laughs> or I'm the great so and so who are you to question me you know this is this is my church this is my ministry I do as I see fit yeah, yeah. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. What kind of example are some of these people setting you? Hmm? What kind of example? Hmm. You know, uh, a lot of the easy believism, scumbag, devil, heretic, Jesuit coadjutors, the example that they're, they're, they're not saved, they're, they work for the Vatican, but a lot of the examples that they are setting on to people is to, to be nitpickers, false accusers. That's all they, that's all they can do. That, that's all they can do. So those who think they are saved, who are following them, they're, the example that these devils are giving, are giving example to these people to do the same thing, of go out there and attack people, start nitpicking, start doing this. That's all you're concerned about. Well, of themselves are being lords over the flock, over God's heritage. And they're not saved themselves. Isn't that something? Hmm. See, that is why it says, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Uh, go, go to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 4. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. Ordained, okay, look at that. Ordained for men. It does look at that verse. It says ordained for men, not of men. What do you, if you got the time, check verse 1 here in Hebrews chapter 5 in a Bible and see if it says, of men. I bet you. I bet you. I don't know. I haven't looked. But see, for every high priest taken from among men is there ordained for men in things pertaining to God. Doesn't say of men. I bet you. I bet you. I, I don't know for sure, though. I, I wouldn't be surprised. But I bet you. If you look this, uh, this verse up in the Bible, would it say for men or of men? I wonder. I wonder. Seeing how the Bibles come from Rome. 
Yes, for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof, he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. Verse 4. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Now, book of Hebrews, written for the Hebrews during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why it's written in this style as to convey it on to the Jews who are remaining during the time of Jacob's trouble once they figure it out that we of the Church of the Living God who adhere to the authorized version of the Scriptures, we're telling them the truth all along, okay? But you know where it says taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint but willingly, okay? There are many things that we of the Church of the Living God who are in this position that we lose out on, okay? Absolutely. But, you know, kind of like the thing with Gideon, you know, the 300 men thing, you know, at first there was a lot of people, but the Lord was like, ah, there's too many people. Uh, too many people. There need to be less, lest the people think that they've done it themselves. See, a lot of the stuff that we do of the Church of the Living God our rewards are not down here. Our rewards are with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And a lot of the things that we do can be taken away just like that. For example, you know, you can work uh, hours trying to put together a video and then YouTube for some reason whatsoever, just take it away, you know. Just take it away as nothing, as if it were no big deal. A lot of the stuff that you and I as the Church of the Living God will work hard at will be lightly esteemed by many, unfortunately. That's unfortunately a price that is paid. But remember, our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay? Our labor is not in vain in the Lord. I, uh, I have zero trust for anyone, anyone who has the play to pay mentality and they're calling themselves of the church of the living God, I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it quite highly. Yeah, I doubt it quite highly. See, the uh, ver verse 28 in Acts chapter 20. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. John chapter 10. See, Paul lived amongst them as an example. And then someone who was living that example, living what he was preaching and teaching, uh, taken away. Wolves would come in. John chapter 10, verses 7, on to verse 13. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, which a lot of people like to boot the door out of the way. Don't you, pal? Yeah. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill sometimes literally, and to destroy, steal, steal your wages from you, steal things from you, to kill, to kill your hopes, and to destroy, destroy your faith. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. 
The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, or charlatan, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. Now, there are some out there who, you know, these, these devils, they make it their whole thing to go after people. So see, I'm not, a, I'm not a hireling. See, I'm attacking this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Yeah. Yeah, but when push comes to shove, when push comes to shove, when the rubber hits the road, absolute suffering reveals, and absolute suffering reveals absolutely. Hmm. Where's the meat? Where's the metal of these people? Can't be found. Why? Because they're hirelings. They're hirelings. Just like Satan's uh, thing, what he tried to do with Job. You know, have you not put a hedge around him? Have you not blessed everything he has? The Lord's like, okay, you can do what you will, but don't, don't touch him. Then Satan goes and takes away all his worldly stuff. And of course, Job's like, naked came I into this world, naked shall I return thither. The Lord hath gave, the Lord hath taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. Then what does Satan do? It's like, oh, okay, yeah, skin for skin, yeah. I, you let me take away everything. Let me touch his bone and his flesh. Let me make him sick. Absolute suffering reveals, and absolute suffering reveals absolutely. How many of these people when the rubber hits the road, how many of these people will be willing to give their lives for the sheep? Not, you know, in an actual sense, maybe coming up, I don't know. But how many are willing to take the oversight thereof? Well, I've spent hours to put, so have I. So have I. And yeah, someone could watch only five minutes of it and then piss all over it. Yeah. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Beware of hirelings, people. Especially right now, with as strapped as as many of you are, and you got these hirelings, these charlatans out there. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Just two verses here. Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. The hirelings. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. And of course... Second Peter chapter 2, Second Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even, the, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Again, think of Gyasi. Followed his pernicious ways because he was covetous. It's like, this Syrian? You healed the Syrian? You wanted to take something? For, I'm, I'm going to go take it if you don't want it. And again, was the way of God evil spoken of in the eyes of Naman because of that? We don't know. But every potential was there to do such. Okay? Keep that in mind. Verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, 
and their damnation slumbereth not. Do you realize that a lot of these televangelists, televangelist people, uh, like, you know, that Charles Lawson guy, dude, I, look, I, I don't care if he preaches from the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? Number one, the guy's in the church building. Number two, okay, he's talking against the Jesuit propaganda thing, but, but yet in his little government 501c3 church building, his people are sitting there with face masks. How could... How could any of you of the Church of the Living God take that man seriously? Charles Lawson. Hey, 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 the devil even preaches truth. Okay? Uh, a devil could preach truth from the scriptures because the scripture speaks for itself. Okay? His congregation. How could any one of the Church of the Living God how could any of you take that man seriously? How can you? I don't understand that. I don't understand how any of you can take Charles Lawson seriously. Okay? I don't, I don't understand. And isn't it interesting, you know, Mr. Smiley? And I'm not talking about you in Canada either. either. Um, Mr. Smiley, you know, David Daniels from Chick Publications. Okay? Uh, <laughs> who only gets mad at those of the Church of the Living God who call him out on things. Burp. Go figure that one out. But I don't recall seeing a video where you see Mr. David Daniels standing there at the pulpit. I'd like to see the crowd that he's preaching to in his church building that he's preaching in. And he's in California too. I know there are some of you brethren who are in California. Hey, or California. Hey, I'm in Illinois. Okay. Our, our states are some of the worst. What is it? New York, Illinois, and California. The three worst states in the Union. Okay. Um, but he's in California. Yeah. I, 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 there's a reason if they don't show the crowd. Um, uh, there's a reason why. <laughs> because I'll have the face mask on. I bet you. Especially in California. Give me a break. Give me a break. Hey, maybe they don't. I don't know. I don't know. But like again, like I said about uh, Charles Lawson, I, how can any of you? How can any of you? Uh, look, if you're of the Church of the Living God, you like that guy. I'm sorry. How can you take that guy seriously? How can you take him seriously? I don't get it. <laughs> I just, I just simply do not get it. Okay. Acts chapter twenty again. Now let's look at verse thirty. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Well, I can do that. I, I could sit there and do this. That's easy to do. Yeah, yeah, you put, you put your stuff into a computer program and boop, out, out comes your sermon. Huh? Where you get the treasury of uh, uh, the scripture knowledge and just uh, take the notes off of that. Yeah. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things. Why? To draw away disciples after them. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two verses seventeen on to verse nineteen. And their word will eat as doth a canker. Of whom? Now, a canker is something like a canker sore, is acidic in nature, kind of, and it, it eats away, okay? And their word will eat as doth a canker. Eat, eat as doth a canker. A canker sore eats away, okay? Of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have heard, saying that the resurrection has passed already and overthrow the faith of some. Were these two guys saved? I don't think so. I don't think so. Brother, I don't think these two guys were saved. I really do not. Why do you say that? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, 
having this seal. Anyone who is truly, genuinely saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, ye are sealed until the day of redemption. You're sealed. Okay? So, nevertheless, the foundation of God, and no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Okay? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So were Hymenius and Philetus saved? I don't think so, brother. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think verse 19 kind of shows us that they weren't. Okay? And as far as the... Um, uh, verse 20 on to verse 21. I did cover that in another video somewhere. I can't remember which one. I can't remember which one. But but yeah, uh, Hymenius and Philetus were not, I don't believe they were of the church of the living God. Because God, because nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Yeah. And their word, Hymenius and Philetus, their word will eat as doth a canker. Hmm. And of course, Second Peter, go back to Second Peter chapter two. Okay. Second Peter chapter two, verses twelve on to verse nineteen. Not first Peter, Brad. Take part. Second Peter chapter two, verses twelve on to verse nineteen. But these, as natural brute beasts, unregenerate people, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things which they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime, spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you having eyes full of adultery, wanting to be of the world, be in the world and of the world, and also have the blood to play both sides. <laughs> yeah. Having eye, uh, and shall we, okay. But these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own con corruption. I'm sorry, I skipped this, it seems. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. While they feast with you. Living and up in their sins, boasting themselves in their sins, because, hey, God's grace covers it all, right? Having eyes full of adultery. Excuse me for skipping that. Beg your pardon. And that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. Covetous practices. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things. Why? To draw away disciples after them. Because they want to be in charge. They want to be the diatrophies, don't they? Yeah. Cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Asor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. A hireling, a charlatan, okay, con artist. Use of the Lord, sure was, but they killed him with the sword. But yet he cast a stumbling block for the children of Israel. And the Lord did use him. You read that up in Numbers. He gave a prophecy about how they were going to end. Okay? That came to pass. So yes, the Lord used him. <laughs> but the Lord was certainly not pleased with Balaam. Obviously. Obviously. Okay? But was rebuked for his iniquity. Now, you know, how the Lord used Balaam, even, you know, to give a prophecy, uh, the Lord can use whatever he wants to get his point across. Prove it to you. Okay, let's keep reading. But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb not even, uh, not being able to speak. Ass, 
Denki. Speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. The Lord used Joab to rebuke David. Okay? You know, if you don't come down here and say thanks to your guys who went to war for you, uh, you're going to have troubles. God, the Lord used Joab. The Lord did use Balaam. He sure did. You read that in Numbers, how he gave the prophecy of how each of these guys would uh, meet their end and stuff like that. Came to pass. <laughs> the Lord used the dumbass. Okay? Yeah? Okay? These are wells. They're wells. Have an appearance that you can get things out of them, but these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest. <sighs> Hirelings. They see true trouble coming, and they flee away. True danger on the horizon. To whom? The mist of darkness is reserved forever. And these, these hirelings, all of them, and these devil coadjutors, pond scum, scumbag, Jesuit coadjutors here. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. See, the, those who, you watch those, Sell evangelists like that disgusting scum, T.D. Jakes. All they preach about, all they're preaching, all links back to the skin suit. What gratifies the skin suit? Okay? Because remember, Satan savoreth not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. He was cursed to go upon his belly to eat dust all the days of his life, and man is dust. Okay? You look at all of what these people are preaching, these hirelings. It all resorts, goes back to the glorification of man's flesh. Your best life now. During all this time, you, you can live as a prince. God wants you to be happy. Even during these times, give us your money so we can live in an example. See, don't you want to be like me? Huh? For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty. Like all these easy believism devils. They promised them liberty. Teaching people to have a light attitude, a flippant attitude of sin. Well, it doesn't matter because God's grace covers it all. You're going to pay for that. You're going to pay dearly for that. They themselves are the servants, not slaves. They chose their way already. The servants of, uh, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome of the same, he is brought into bondage. And we have to make this reference. Romans chapter 6, we have to, we have to, we have to. Romans chapter 6, uh, uh, where is that, where is that? There it is. Verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? What isn't God doing? And what isn't Satan doing, people? But, <laughs> but they allure. Look at that, verse 18. <laughs> For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, God's not mad at you. God wants to bless you. Times are hard right now, but don't worry. There's a, oh, it makes me so sick. Oh, times are rough right now, but there is a harvest in your future. 
Yeah, take the steel and the chisel upon you. Eventually, take the mark of the beast. You'll have your harvest. I pray that the Lord silences these charlatans, these hirelings. I really do. I really do. I really do. I really do. Because while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of a man of for of whom a man is overcome of the same he is brought in bondage. In bondage. Is brought in bondage. Servants, not a slave. Okay? Servants, not a slave. And while we're at it, while we're here, first John chapter two. Because Acts chapter 20, verse 30 warns us, also of your own selves shall men arise. What have, what have I been telling you lately? Okay? What have I been telling you and warning you of lately? That there are going to be many people out there who say, who claim, who you think are of the church of the living God. They're going to have the tables turned on them and exposed for what they really are. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18, on to verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Boom! Duh! They went out from us. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest. That they were not all of us. And see, but ye, those who are saved, born again, converted, church of the living God, new creatures in Christ Jesus. But ye have an unction, that's the seal of the Holy Ghost. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. It's just started this year, brethren. It's only February the 7th. Interesting about what the proverb of today was about, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're just, I mean, the falling away has been happening for a long time. But we're going to be seeing it get be dramatically increased especially as this year continues. Go to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. <laughs> this is when Peter and all them were brought before the uh, council and whatnot. Uh, uh, Acts chapter 5. We're going to be reading verses 36 on to verse 39. But Peter in verse 29 says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God. Rather than men. Then they took the apostles out for a little while. And then Gamaliel stood up. And started talking to them about. He was a Pharisee of the, a doctor. Gamaliel. Okay. Had in reputation among all the people. And commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. That's verse 34. Verse 35. And he said unto them. Ye men of Israel. Take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody. I'm a prophet of the Lord. I have the anointing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you sure do got an anointing, pal. It's not from my God, not my Father. <laughs> For before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up, rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing. Right there is the only mention scripturally 
of the Maccabean Revolt, which they have here in the Apocrypha, but um, the historicity of the account of the Maccabees is... <laughs> but this verse 37 is an actual reference to the historic Maccabean Revolt that actually happened. Okay, The book of Maccabees is not inspired scripture. Not at all. But this is Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing. That is a reference onto the Maccabean Revolt. The Maccabean Revolt actually did happen. Okay? After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all as many as obeyed him were dispersed. These false prophets, okay? These hirelings, these charlatans that come up, okay? They get their little click followers who would die for them, who will go to all ends of the earth to defend their hero. But yet, when they fall, it comes to naught. Hmm. And now I say unto you, and here's the proof in the pudding, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. Man at his best state is altogether what? Vanity. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. You know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, a holy place here, in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, what's the last and the ending remarks of chapter 7? Uh, verses 27 on to verse 29. Behold, in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. <laughs> one man among a thousand have I found. One out of a thousand. Now, stop right there. Stop right there. How many people claim they are Christian, but the more you speak with them and the more you learn of them, number one, you find out, they're, yeah, they're a Christian. They ain't out of the church of the living God. Many out there claim to be of the church of the living God, but rather they are Christians. And remember, Catholics are Christians. Okay? Many people claim to be saved, but very few really are. Oh, about, give you a ratio, okay? How about one man, uh, one man among a thousand have I found? But a woman among all those have I not found. If you come across... If you come across a truly saved sister, a true sister of the Church of the Living God, I know of about, about seven, my wife included in that number. Seven. I know many men. I know many men. I know a lot of men. But women? You know, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, uh, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Solomon says here, one man among a thousand have I found, very slim, but a woman among all those have I not found. Then again, you got to remember about King Solomon. He was the scriptural ultimate player. He had a thousand women at his disposal. Boom. And he was also in sin. Boom because of the abundance of all the blessings that he had. Verse 29. Verse 29. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. And that's something. Okay, Go back to Acts chapter 5. Picking up at verse 38. But now I say unto you, refrain from these men, 
Let them alone, for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. Brethren, do you realize that a lot of these devils who are attacking, they're fighting against God? You know, you're of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus. You know how Paul talked about how I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And he said, henceforth, let no man trouble me. Go to Galatians chapter 6. I believe that's in Galatians chapter 6, right? Go to Galatians chapter 6. Yes. Galatians chapter 6. Yes. <laughs> and isn't it interesting that we want verses 12 on to verse 13? Okay? And, and, and remember here, in Acts chapter 20, verse 30 again, Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Galatians 6. Verses 12 on to verse 13, As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. And Paul said, verses 17 on to verse 18, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. See, they tried to beat Christ out of Paul. All that he went through. Some would like to argue, well, his personality probably wasn't helping. <laughs> I'll probably give you that. But ultimately, ultimately, remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We have, this is a spiritual battle, okay? Ephesians 6, 12, okay? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, okay? Christ in you, the hope of glory, is what this world, Satan, hates about you because you are sealed unto the day of redemption. They were attacking Paul, trying to get Christ out of him, which isn't going to happen. Why do you think Paul mentions in Romans chapter 8, what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Okay? They can beat it out of you. They can, they can't try, they can try to beat it out of you. They can try to torture it out of you. They can try to uh, have, you know, kill your loved ones right before your eyes. They can't get Christ out of you. Because you are sealed unto the day of redemption. And if this counsel and this work be of men, men, mere men, unregenerate men, they have not God within them. It's not God doing the works. It's man that's doing the works. And the work of men will come to naught. The work of men will come to naught. Let me say that again. The work of men will come to naught. You know, you look at Kenneth Dopeland, the effeminate that he's becoming with all the plastic surgery that he is. Um, that he's been doing that for years and years and years and years and years. He's doing that by his own power. Well, no, not actually because Satan is keeping it up for him, but it'll come to naught. All these hirelings, all their ministries, all that they're doing, brethren, it's going to come to naught eventually. But those of us who do the work of the Lord according to his standard, according as he would have us to do it, that's going to endure. Acts chapter 20, verse 31. Therefore, watch. Pay attention to these things, brethren. And remember that by the space of three years... I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. You have been warned thoroughly. You are being warned thoroughly. Okay? You have no excuse. You, the only way the wool is going to be pulled over your eyes is if you allow it. 
if you choose to be deceived. Okay? Verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. Oh, <laughs> oh brethren, oh, I commend you to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We've talked about this, but you know, I, I keep seeing this and it just bothers me to no end. Oh, it just bothers me to no end. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 11. Who is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. The Ruckmanites have made Pete Ruckman their golden calf. Hey, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Come on. Prove me wrong on that. Look at the Ruckmanites. Okay? Look at them. I rest my case. Okay? But they, they've, they've set Pete Ruckman here up on a pedestal. And if someone uh, has common sense, it's like, oh, that guy wasn't saved. No way. <laughs> There's no way that guy was saved. Oh, you've spoken against God himself. People putting men on pedestals. And then these men allowing themselves to be put on pedestals and it goes right to their heads. Thinking you're somebody when you're nothing. Who are you? Oh. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe. Even as the Lord gave to every man. <laughs> I have planted. Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything. Neither he that watereth. But God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth. And he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Take heed. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is. Jesus Christ. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. You know, we've covered this in the video of uh, Beware of the Worship of Men. It's, it's, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. God forbid you worship a man. God forbid he's your hero. You're in need of a hero, huh? Pity you who needs one. We don't need a hero. We don't need a hero among men. We have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. If anyone is to be your hero, he ought to be it. Back to uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I commend you to God. Like that wicked lady um, who I talked to on the square the one time. Like, uh, who are you turning people to? The Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures. Oh, no, but you want me to take, put them into a satanic church building and get poisoned by the Jesuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think perhaps, maybe, no. Yeah, uh, okay, and now go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 
1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 14 on to verse 20. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. He was the one who brought the true gospel onto them. You had many people who are teaching you things, but how many are bringing you onto Christ? Saying like, hey, here, here, here. Let me, let me show you how the scripture says you are to be saved. Okay? Many people are out there who can instruct you in things. How many are pointing to the scriptures, to our Lord Jesus Christ? These hirelings are pointing to a building so they can make more money. Okay? Come. Let us reason together, you and I, huh? For though, okay. Verse 16. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. See, now, Paul was not trying to establish his own little clique, his own whatever. No, he was the example of what? He was the, ex the apostle unto the Gentiles. His example of living today in this dispensa dispensation is how we are to live our lives according to Scripture. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Paul is the example of this dispensation, how people are to live according to Scripture and to follow God. Okay? That's what he meant. He wasn't looking for people to be Pauline, Paulites. Okay? God forbid. No. It's like, I'm giving you an example. Remember that about Paul. Remember that about Paul. He was doing, he sacrificed certain things that he might live by an example. Okay? He sacrificed things which were rightly, which were rightly he could have had. He had power to have them. But he chose the rather to not. Yeah, yeah, he chose. He had the power to receive certain things, but he didn't. But he chose to live in it as an example, okay? We're going to touch on that in a little bit, okay? You know, taking the oversight thereof, okay? Why not rather be defrauded? Hmm? You, you do know that your work, all your work that you do for our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his standard according as he would have you to do it's not in vain even though down here you're not seeing a return i hope the lord gives you a boil on your buttocks well you gotta see it with your eyes huh <laughs> yeah 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 verse 17 for this cause I have sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere and in every church building. In every church. Bodies of people, not a building. Just keeping you on your toes. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly. If the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power, through feign words, they promise them liberty, but they themselves are the servants of corruption. Yeah. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. Kingdom of God. Now, this is not a reference unto the kingdom of heaven. This is with reference unto the spiritual kingdom. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. How many talk a good talk? They don't walk their talk. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we are all hypocrites to a degree. We are. We are. Uh, and that, that's something that stings a lot of people. But you got to remember, when it comes to that, uh, <laughs> number one, pray that your hypocrisy only goes so far. <laughs> and number two, um, <laughs> I have not met one man 
or one woman. I have not even found one man among a thousand yet who has not been totally free of all hypocrisy in their life, in one way or another. One day, one day, maybe the Lord will guide your servant on to a video on hypocrisy. I know, still uh, working on one about the gap theory. I, I haven't forgotten about you, brother. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, the hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. See, hypocrisy also is linked onto the skin suit because our spirit and soul are housed within the skin suit and the spirit lusteth against the flesh. Okay? Hence, a lot of where hypocrisy comes into play. A little rabbit trail for you there. But Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Of course we had to come here. Of course we had to come here for verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to men, okay? And to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Ephesians chapter 1, we talked about this in the uh, Calvinism video. Calvinism is not scriptural, it's satanic, okay? But, oh, did I just say that? Yeah, I sure did, okay? But Ephesians chapter 1, Verses 3 and verse 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, in Christ, excuse me. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Chosen us in him, meaning the way of the cross. We come to our Lord on his terms. We are chosen in him from what? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. He chose the way of the cross from the foundation of the world. And we come to him on his terms. We are part of that. That's what that means, okay? If I remember, I'll link the Calvinist. Hey, if you make it this far, uh, predestinated to be an elect or non-elect Calvinist, if I forget to put the link in there, check out that video, okay? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, separate, and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ unto, uh, eh, by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. He has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. That's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, okay? We are not appointed to wrath, the time of Jacob's trouble. We are but to obtain salvation, uh, being redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble, the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? Meaning, our destination is set, okay? Once you come to him on his terms and he seals you and saves you, okay? It's not the Calvinistic predestination. Beware of that. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us, uh, made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. See, when you and I die... To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Our inheritance is Jesus Christ. Okay, We're going to have a kingdom of heaven inheritance, yes. Yes, we are. But our inheritance is Jesus Christ. Okay? In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, 
in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And the Lord is that Spirit. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. And then of course go to Ephesians chapter 2 verses 13 unto the close of the chapter. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for He is our peace. He is our inheritance. Okay? Who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, where there is neither Jew nor Greek, barbarian, Scythian. We are all one in Christ Jesus, salvifically. Culturally, that's a different story. But salvifically, as pertaining to salvation, we're all one. Okay? Broke down the middle wall. That's what that's talking about. Okay? Having abolished in his flesh the anonymity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might re reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. One body, there's only one way. And that one body is comprised of both Jews and Gentiles. Okay? And came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, comma, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. He is the foundation which the apostles and prophets are built off of, not the other way around, which Catholicism likes to teach you. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Back to Acts chapter 20. Picking up at verse 32 again. And now, brethren, I commend you to God, and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Verse 33. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or peril. See, Paul wasn't in it for the money. <laughs> and anyone of, truly of the church of the living God who have been called to this position are not in it for the money. I've told many, and... I would do this, I would do this, if I had a thousand subscribers, which I do not, praise the Lord, 500 subscribers, which I do not, praise the Lord, one subscriber or zero subscriber. If the Lord didn't provide anything for me of the church of the living God, for my house, for us, I would still do this. Because this is my passion. The danger with so many is when it becomes a profession. The late Leonard Ravenhill made a statement which I, I had never forgotten. Preaching is not a profession, it's a passion. And if it becomes to you a nine-to-fiver, well, I got to do this in order to pay the bills, you're missing it, pal. You're missing it. Hmm. This is my passion. This is my passion. Do I enjoy doing this all the time? No, I do not. But this is what I'm passionate about. This is my passion. This is not my profession. I'm not a professional. Okay. People ask me, well, what do you do? <laughs> I'm in the Ministry of Reconciliation. I have, and I have the Word of Reconciliation. Okay? But see, 
I would do this regardless. I would do this regardless, okay? Because this is my passion. And if this wasn't a passion, but rather a profession, doing it just to get by, doing it just to pay the bills, doing it for just for worldly things, that's sin. And has it become thus unto you? Has it become thus? Make all your arguments all day you want to about scriptures that we are going to look at here in a little bit. But nevertheless, if it isn't your passion, <laughs> look at the devils. Oh, they're really passionate, aren't they? But then you have these hirelings, these charlatans. You know, look at, look at that uh, Gene Kim guy. <laughs> look at him, okay? Look at him. Look at look at some of these. I mean, these. You know, they go. To, I mean, you, you talk to some of these people. It's like I gotta go to I gotta go to a college so I can get a degree to do this. You know, a piece of paper on the wall so I can make me my six figure salary. You're missing it. You're missing it. Paul. I have coveted no man silver or gold, okay? And there's a good reason why. Because if that is what you are after, Psalm 10. Psalm 10. There's some out there who might have started out really well, but the farther they go, they get caught in this trap. And it becomes a profession. And the passion for it is the passion that it is just a profession. It's not a, profe uh, not a passion because you love people. Look at these hirelings. It's a job. Yes, but that it's all, that's all it is. They're passionate about the return. Not passionate because they don't want to see you go to hell. There's a big difference there. There's a big difference. Psalm 10, verses 1 under verse 3. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. And look at these hell evangelists. Look at them. They're persecuting the poor in times like this. Ooh. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Amen. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. Now, has that changed today in this dispensation? No. No. God abhorreth covetousness. To say that it's different in this dispensation is to deny what God wrote in the Ten Commandments, which was there to show us that we can't save ourselves. God hates, abhors covetousness. Because it was a form of covetousness that God, you know, Satan, Satan with Eve, tempted them through pride and covetousness. Ye shall be as gods, no one good and evil. There's a reason why God hates covetousness. He abhors it. And Paul says here, I have coveted no man, silver or gold or apparel. Someone else said that, something very similar. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 12. 1 Samuel chapter 12. 1 Samuel chapter 12. Verses 1 under verse 5. Big pardon, brethren. 1 Samuel chapter 12. Verses 1 under verse 5. This is after, you know, <laughs> the people rejected the Lord ruling over them. The Lord gives them Saul, King Saul, okay? Here's Samuel. And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice and all that ye said unto me, and have made a king over you. And now, behold, <laughs> the king walketh before you. 
and I am old and gray-headed. And behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. So he's old and gray-headed. Now he's going to sit back and take his ease, huh? And live off of the process, off of the proceeds, right? Yeah. Behold, here I am. Witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind mine eyes therewith? And I will restore it you. And they said, Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, the Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that ye have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. And also in verses 23 and on to verse 25. Now, Samuel was stepping away from the spotlight as someone to go to, because they have Saul now. Okay, so now that he was no longer a judge in Israel, that means, like I said, he just got to sit back and, you know, look at everything and just give here. Oh, oh yeah, you want something? Okay, here, here. Oh, here, give me a little something. Okay, here, here's that. Here's that. Here, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to sit back and uh, take it easy, put my feet up. And, oh, you, oh, yeah, here, 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 here's a little, here's a, here, here's a little grub for you. Okay. Yeah, hey, I, I'm, I'm out of it now, right? Yeah. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 23 and verse 25. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. So even though Samuel was, you know, he was a he was a judge. He was the he was actually the last of the judges of Israel before a king. Okay, and everyone was going to Samuel as a judge. Okay, as judge. Okay, that's the reason why Samuel follows up judges while Ruth is before Samuel and stuff like that. Okay, but okay, okay, he was one of the judges. Scripture even declares him so. But see, now that he was removed from the spotlight. Now he doesn't do anything, right? No. Again, moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. But if ye, still, but if ye shall still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed, both ye and your king. So even though all eyes weren't fastened on him, he was still going to teach the people the right way. I have been told by those who um, who would know better that once the Lord puts you in a position such as this, there is no official retiring from it. There ought not to be. And there isn't really a time when, you know, you are not called to be in service. Unless you sin and mess things up yourself. Unless you get a little too high strung on that filthy lucre there, boy. Hmm. Kind of example are you living by? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Eric John Phelps, I, I, I've, I've never forgotten this. He once said, my time is valuable now. And in order to get Mr. Eric John Phelps' time, you got to pay him something like, what, $500 an hour? Wow. Wow. Okay, yeah, your time is valuable, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, so you charge him people. Apparently, I don't know for, for certain. I've never attempted to try to talk to a guy. I, I, I don't think a guy like he and I would get along, okay? <laughs> Just like certain other people, he and I would never get along, okay? But, you know, I, I've never forgotten that. He's like, my time is valuable. You want my time, you got to pay me for it. Because my time is valuable. I have done the business. Good for you. Good for you. And uh, thank you for what you've done. Yes, yes, yes. Good, yes. Your information is spot on. Yay, very good. A little high, uh, a little high on yourself, aren't you there, pal? Yeah, yeah, I've never forgotten that. Yeah, my time is valuable. you got to pay me now. My, I rec- what, what, what did he say? Uh, 500, uh, 500 res- federal reserve notes? And hey, like I said, I'm not, I'm not bashing Eric John Phelps <laughs> that much, but that... That was something that was a little off to me, you know. That was a, like my my work. You gotta pay for my work. My work is worth money, and I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Well, your work deserves a recompense. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And uh, have you forgotten that the Lord will recompense you, your work, with a C down here? Hmm? Or, excuse me, with an S, a verb. He will recompense you, your work down here, too. Okay? Uh, let me prove that to you. Uh, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians, not Colossians, Brad. Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 on to verse 20. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all, and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus. The things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. See, God will provide our need. We are to live of the gospel, okay? We are to live of the gospel, not off the gospel. And Paul here, now go back to Acts chapter 20. Look at verse 34. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me, okay? So what does this mean? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Now we've talked about this before. Okay, because there are those out there who like to dispute the fact that there is such a thing as someone doing doing this for full time and the Lord giving him for his needs because of it. Okay, there are those out there who like to dispute that, but it is based upon scripture and they'll say, well, Paul didn't. There's a reason why Paul didn't. One second, brethren. Okay, excuse me, brethren, just had a. (laughs) A <laughs> vicious sneezing attack. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 9, verses 11 on to verse 15. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather... Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the the gospel of Christ. Hinder the gospel of Christ. Now see, Paul had the power. Look here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, where uh, at verse 6, beg your pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon. Looking at verse 6 in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Or I only am Barnabas, have we not power to forbear working? And you read up here in a little bit more, uh, verse 4. 
Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord and Kephas? Or I only and Barnabas, have we not power to forbear working? See, Paul had the power and every right to live of the gospel. But see, he said to people, be ye followers of me. Remember I told you to remember that? Okay. He chose not to do this because this was at the infancy when the gospel was being spread amongst the Gentiles. And in order to be an effective example, especially at that time, Paul worked with his own hands. He did receive gifts from the brethren. We already saw that, okay? But he did that to set an example. He had every power and every right to live of the gospel, to concentrate fully on this because he was a tent maker. But he chose to be a tent maker, to be an example unto the brethren, okay? That he wouldn't hinder the gospel of Christ. Because remember, this was the infancy of the gospel being preached unto the Gentiles, okay? It was Paul, the apostle unto the Gentiles. So if he came along in that infancy, teaching these people and preaching and living by an example of, well, I'm just going to sit here in the infancy of it, that would have hindered the gospel of Christ. Whereas today, the gospel has well been established of what it truly is. And you got to remember, Paul also was single, not bound by anything. He didn't have children. Okay, he had not a wife, he had not children. Okay, there are those who have wives and children. Okay, and there are those out there who have been called to live of the gospel. And those who are of to live of the gospel do have the power to not be employed in the secular world in order that all their efforts may be employed in teaching the spiritual in preaching the spiritual, and living the gospel, okay? There is nothing wrong with that. But see, these hirelings come in and take advantage of it and distort it of what it really is. And hence, because of their distortion, those who have truly been called to this position, okay, suffer for it. Why? Because of the hirelings, because of the Jesuit coadjutor hirelings out there. And for those who have to remind you, well, my time is worthy. Worth my, uh, my time is worth money, okay? What I do, you got to pay for. You ain't going to pay, you ain't going to play. Well, then you get walked over. Then people take advantage of you. Like they did Paul. He spent and shall be spent. Even though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. You know, uh, I, I know that people take advantage. I know that. So what? So what? It's no skin off my backside. Why is it yours? I don't get that. I don't get that. I, I've i even had apparently some stuff plagiarized. So what? So what? I don't care. Why? Because if this counsel be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Verse 13. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained. The Lord is the one who set that up, not men, by the way, that, that they have power. Okay? It was the Lord that ordained that, not men. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Verse 11, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? But see, you got to remember these hirelings such as the cell evangelists, the hell evangelists, okay? Their means, their, you know, 
what they have to, their lifestyle, what an moronic word, you know. I agree with what that devil Carlin said. You want to know what a moronic word lifestyle is? Consider that in a technical sense, Attila the Hun had an active outdoor lifestyle. I agree with that. But some of these people's lifestyles, like John MacArthur, uh, T.D. Jakes, I'm sick of that, that scum. But these guys, they have established themselves a standard of living that is far greater than most other people. Far greater than the Son of Man who had not to lay his, and had nowhere to lay his head. Who fell asleep in a boat in the back while getting rained on and stuff like that. Foxes have holes, and the birds of the airs have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. And then you see John MacArthur living in a multi-million dollar mansion. Huh? Huh? God giveth the increase. Yes, he does. But we who, are, who, who preach the gospel are to live of the gospel. Okay? And... Not to live above our means. And if things come to you, your means should stay here instead of being elevated. And see, these hirelings, they want to live like the world-typified um, millionaire rock star. I mean, you look at that Jake's guy, that uh, Prince guy, and all these devils. Uh, who's that, that Stephen Furick guy? I mean, give me a break. Give me a break. These guys are rolling in the dough. Itching people's ears. Living like superstars. Charlatans. They're hirelings. And Lawson or Dawson, whatever his name is. People in his congregation wearing the first mask. Again, if you're offended by that, I don't, I, I'm sorry for you. How can you fall for that guy? How can you fall for him? I don't get it. I do not get it. I do not get it at all. But, see, verse 14, Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. And having food and raiment therewith, let us be content. Anything else is a luxury. Okay? Church of the living God. The Lord pays for us to be here. The Lord provides for us. And that's it. For our needs. You know why? Because if he gave us more, we, me especially, I struggle with pride. I would be a bad steward with if he gave me more. So the Lord pays just for what we need. Praise him. And you know what? <laughs> I don't want any more. Okay? The Lord gives us for what we need. And our needs are met. Praise the Lord. Because even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things. Neither have I written these things that it should be, be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory void. See, Paul said, was saying, I have that right and power to do that, but I'm not going to do that. So I could be an example unto you. In the infancy of the church of the living God, in this time when it was first being promoted, okay, he chose not to, even though he had the power to do so. And that is ordained to the Lord, that they who preach the gospel should live of the gospel. So it is legitimate. But see, the hirelings, Make it look odious unto you because of their lifestyles and because of all that they're gaining. And remember, wealth is not just what uh, correlates onto the money. Oh, look at the properties that some of these people have. Like, uh, you know, John MacArthur, I guess he has something like three, four houses. Uh, T.D. Jakes, how, who knows how many properties he has. Okay, look at these guys. Something about getting land with these people. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay? I don't know. Now, uh, while we're here, 
Uh, where was that? Where was that? Now go to Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter three. We're almost done. We're almost done. Second Thessalonians chapter three. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verses six on to verse thirteen. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the, tra after the tradition which he received of us. And that tradition that Paul is talking about is based upon the scriptures, not the traditions of men, like Catholicism, okay? Paul's traditions that he are mentioning are found right here. You Catholics, your traditions are founded in your catechism, not founded upon scripture, okay? For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. And remember, he was doing that to set an example, especially at the beginning stages of the gospel going forth unto the Gentiles, okay? Keep that in mind about Paul, okay? All right? This was the beginnings, okay? He wasn't married. He didn't have kids, okay? Not because we have not power, verse 9, but, but, to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. Verse 9, again goes back to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and also 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Like I said at the beginning of this, it's very interesting that both chapter 9s and 1 and 2 Corinthians deal along the same lines. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? I don't know what the numerology, numer numerical uh, value of that is because there is a system of numbers within Scripture that the Lord has. That's a little above my uh, <laughs> above me. I remember... A dear brother once uh, kind of hinted, it's like, oh, hey, Brad, why don't you check this out? And I told him, it's like, hey, brother, <laughs> I, I loved math so much that I dropped out of school, okay? I, I'm not good with math. I'm not good with math. So the number thing about scripture, I, that's, 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 that's beyond me, okay? But, sorry for that little rabbit. Verse 9 again, not because we have, not because we have not power. Paul referring onto this, like, yeah, we had, we have power. We have power to not do secular stuff. But because, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. Because, again, it was the beginning. He was the one bringing the gospel unto the Gentiles and preaching unto the Gentiles. He was the minister unto the Gentiles, okay? Through him, the gospel was preached, okay? The Lord through him preached the gospel unto the Gentiles, and then it exploded, okay, in the beginning infancy. And if he, at the beginning, didn't do that, that would have hindered the gospel of Christ, okay? Keep that in mind, okay? And verse 9 again, not because we have not power. He's like, hey, I had every right to not be out there with you, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither shall, should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, not at all, but are busybodies. Busybodies. There are a lot of people out there who um, are expert and making it look like they are doing something while they are doing nothing. It's an art form. Like I've told you before, I've known of men who can make it look like they're doing all kinds of things. And then at the end of the day, it's like, dude, what have you done? Well, you, you're sitting there and making it look like you've done a lot of stuff, but you ain't done nothing. Busybody. I've seen that before. Ah. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren... Be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary in well-doing. Okay? 
And now go back to go back to Acts chapter 20, verse 35. I have shewed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than, re than to receive. Did Jesus somewhere in Scripture actually say it is more blessed to give than to receive? Some have counted this as a contradiction because even in the Scriptures you won't find this, but Jesus did say this. How? Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. I've dealt with that. It's like Jesus never said that. Well, yeah, he did. The same argument is like, well, they, they say, well, Jesus never said he was God. Uh, but yet he said, I am. He, he called himself the Father there. Okay? He, he did. Okay? Okay? It's, it's an argument around those same lines. Luke chapter 6, verses 30 on to verse 36. Now, this is for the death, burial, and resurrection. And this pertains unto when the king will be on the earth, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Because today, if we are to give to every man and not ask of him uh, stuff like that, people will take advantage of us. Okay? What, like we were just talking about. But here's, here's what Paul was referring to. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. That's the true golden rule. Okay, the golden rule today as established by the Jesuit order is he who has the gold makes the rules. But the true golden rule is right there. As ye would have men, and as ye would have, and as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye have hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies. How do you love your enemies today? By telling them the truth. Okay? This is what he is saying here was for a different dispensation. It was said, number one, under the law, before the death, burial, and resurrection, and it pertains unto the kingdom of heaven. Okay? When the king is going to be on the earth. Okay? We love our enemies today by giving them truth. And when it comes to the things of the gospel, give to all men liberally. Yes. Yes. And if they don't want to hear it, you don't browbeat them. Give them one, two admonitions, and if they will reject that, then fine, walk away, go to the next one. Okay? But, let's continue. And if ye lend to them that of, and if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies and do good, and lending, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. He is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. How many of you would come across your bitter enemy who is in need, who you know, who if you were to help him would spit in your face or run you over with a car or beat you with a baseball bat? Would you still help them? Would you still help them? Knowing how they would reward you, would you still help them? Hmm? Be ye therefore merciful. As your Father also is merciful, for he delighteth in mercy. We are to be merciful. Now, there are circumstances where 
we have to be hard and say hard things to people, yes, but overall, brethren, we are to be merciful. We are to be merciful. And right there is where Jesus was talking about it is better to give than to receive. Let's finish this up. Verses 36 on to the close of the chapter. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. And they didn't, didn't see his face anymore down there on earth ever again. And hence also something for us to remember, brethren. Sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him onto the ship. Our time is ending. The time of God's mercy is coming to an end. The time of God's wrath is coming quickly. I'm talking about, of course, the time of Jacob's trouble. And right now, we are seeing an abundance of hirelings and charlatans coming out of the woodwork. People having their focus on their livelihood rather than having their focus on the Lord. And amen, amen, amen. Our livelihood is in the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And if he doesn't, we won't. And that's the way it works. But be aware, brethren, especially in these last times, be aware of these hirelings who don't care about you. They care only about what you can give them. But they don't care about you. We care about many people. We really do. We really do. We don't talk to uh, a majority of the people as we would like, but that doesn't mean that we don't pray for you or don't care about you. In these times, brethren, with things that are going to be coming upon us, the, uh, the crunch, and like I said, the... Uh, uh, some of the unions here in Illinois, the painters union, like I told you, uh, like I told you at the beginning of this video, the painters union, uh, jab or no job, or if you're not going to get the jab, you don't wear a face mask and daily or something, get that test done, okay? Brethren, times are going to be getting hard for all of us. And we are to help one another in the means that we can. Okay? But please be aware and beware of hirelings, of charlatans, who have no love for you, but only love you for what you can give them. Beware of those types of people, brethren. Beware. Because I'm telling you, closer we get, the more they are going to increase. And those that you think are of us are going to be made manifest that they were not of us. And you know how they're going to do it? It's going to be revealed through their covetousness. You watch. You watch. You watch. Because our Lord abhors covetousness. And these people, while speaking glowing, vain words, swelling words, promising liberty, but they themselves are the servants of corruption. Beware of hirelings, brethren. A, a good way to spot a hireling Everything that they teach you, everything that they talk about, 
all has to do with the glorifying of the flesh in one way or another. Makes you feel good. Makes you feel good to watch a video destroying someone and breaking down their character, doesn't it? Doesn't it? That's what, that's what sells on YouTube. That's what gets the algorithms going. Negativity. <laughs> you know, attack videos and stuff like that. Yeah. And there is a time and a place for that. Yes. 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 But remember, a lot of these devils will do that thing. Okay? So you can get a yeah, rah, rah thing going on. Well, all the while, they don't care one spot about you. You're just someone to provide for them and nothing more. How dare they? How dare they? And every single one who has ever helped us, we are, we are more than grateful. We praise the Lord for every single one of you. And every single one of you, you know who you are. Okay? We can't name you publicly. You know that because you would get your reward. Okay? But to every single one of you who has ever helped us, thank you. We love you. Thank you for that. Even those of you who were evil towards us, who has helped us, thank you. Thank you. You know, I remember Jeremy Carter, the one day, you know, made that comment, you know, talking about how people were giving to him. And he's like, oh, it was just a couple hundred bucks. It's like, dude, shut your mouth. You know, the, the, poor, my, the poor widow who gave two mites gave more than all those people. Some people will give you all that they have. Oh, but oh, it was just a good one. Shut up. Dude, shut up. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching this, brethren. Um, I do apologize for getting a little heated. No I, no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. The times that are going to be coming upon us, brethren, we need to be diligent. The hirelings. The charlatans, those who say they are of us and are not of us, are going to be coming out more and more and more as we continue. Be diligent. Be vigilant. Okay? And you know, brethren, if, if the Lord is going to call you to help someone, do as he would command you to. Not because someone lays a guilt trip on you or talks to you about tithing or, oh, give to me so the Lord will give you a harvest or uses this deceitfully. <laughs> Taking verses out of context. Be careful. Be careful. And thank you to all of you for your prayers. We need them. Thank you to those of you who help us. Thank you. Thank you so much. We love you. We pray for every single one of you. Thank you. Because if the Lord didn't through you, we wouldn't. See? This isn't my job. This is my passion. This is my passion. I'm not a professional. Okay? I'm not a professional. I am a minister. <laughs> a minister of reconciliation. Who has the word of reconciliation. Who is to be an ambassador of Christ. This is my passion. And like I told you before, I, my greatest fear is that this becomes a job. This isn't my job. This is my passion. And I submit to you, if you look at it as just a job, you've lost it. Because this is not mine. 
the Lord has given and the Lord can't take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I love you. Thank you, brethren. And we will see you in the next video.